Your man E. Oh fuck. Church of Dog, Santa Barbara, California. And uh, I'm here right now. I just wanted to talk because I was having this moment here. I was tearing up and um, I want to talk about ancestors. I wanted to talk about local indigenous people. I wanted to talk about real wisdom, what that looks like. And I wanted to talk about why sometimes it's important to not do psychedelics. But that's maybe I won't talk about that that much, but here's the thing, okay, like most many cultures have had a belief system that's based a lot around ancestor worship or connecting with the ancestors. We in the Western society talk about ghosts, ghosts haunt buildings, but other than that people don't think about ghosts very much and the reality is ghosts are everywhere whether you see them or you don't see them, the energy of people that have gone before is never destroyed. So it is kind of around and it's kind of interesting because sometimes we kind of forget about those people that have gone beyond that we knew before, that loved us, that cared for us. And it's amazing what just thinking of them even if you don't believe in ancestors that are ghosts that you can connect with, but even if you just connect with them in terms of opening your mind and your heart and just remembering that person and saying, oh my God, they helped me out so much. Like I was recently reading this book about the Choctaws, which is a Native American tribe here in the United States of America, and what they went through in the Trail of Tears in this book. It was by this guy, Tim Tingle, amazing book just talks about the ancestors as being all around us after they're gone. Maybe not even just our ancestors, but ancestors of other beings. And maybe even friends we've known that have gone beyond or animals that have gone beyond. And That's just something I think is kind of interesting that Western culture is kind of different than a lot of uh, other cultures in the world, more indigenous cultures and tribal cultures and also the um, Japanese and uh, Chinese mostly Japanese tradition is big into the ancestors but why do they want to con why is it that we get disconnected from the ancestors it has to do with the complexity of society and to try to organize this many people the in a way the kind of part of our humanity that has colonized the world didn't want people to be connected to the ancestors because if people are connected to the ancestors they're thinking about the past and where they came from they may not be as easy to manipulate if people are afraid of dying because they're just going to become a ghost and be floating around or be in some other world you know totally fine not hungry not cold not thirsty or horny anymore and just like at peace you know then it'd be harder to control people so these are all a lot of ideas getting slammed together in one tiny little YouTube video, but I want to keep doing these videos and maybe I will make separate videos on these topics, but I want to start having a conversation because I just feel like, God, it's just not out there. I don't see the information and maybe YouTube doesn't prioritize it. So I just got to make so many videos. Somebody will stumble across these videos and see them, but it's not that hard to be wise, you know? But it's easy to think you're wise. It is harder to be wise. And it's just like going down a river in a boat. If you're flowing fast with the current and you're going at a nice speed, why are you going to pull over on the side of the shore? And stop just because somebody says hi just because somebody waves to you if you have somewhere you need to go to and you have some sense of intense purpose then you know you're not gonna stop and say hi but if you do stop and you do say hi, 
who knows what you might find. Who knows? But I feel like so many people are just in that boat going fast that they don't stop when the person waves on the side of the stream. Like they don't even stop to see what the person had to say. So sometimes in life when we're going down the stream, even though we're going in a good direction, even though we have momentum and purpose, something waves to us from the side. And we should not have so much momentum and purpose that we can't stop. Say hi. How's it going? How have you been? So, yeah, I just think being wise just is the question of slowing down enough to see what's coming to you. And obviously some people have been put in some really challenging situations where they can't slow down because they have to work so much and they're so overwhelmed and so stressed because of the stress of life and what's going on. And I think in spiritual circles, there's just such an, such an undertone of just under talking that stress. It's almost like social justice and religion are separate. Oh, you have a horrible job. Everything you hate, it sucks. Your life sucks. Oh, just focus on this spiritual belief system. That'll solve all your problems. You won't be stressed about your shitty life. You won't be stressed about all these horrible things that's happening to you. But the reality is social justice and religion or spirituality should be connected. Religions should be promoting social justice for all people. They shouldn't just be saying to the poor people, oh, just come to me and I'll help you and you won't be sad about being poor anymore. Like, no, they should also be saying to the rich person, hey, why is there this poor person and you have so much money? Doesn't make any sense. Why do you get to have so much and they have so little? Yeah, you've worked hard, but they've just also had shitty luck happen. So, but it's just so important to get connected to the land where you live and the place where you live and the people where you live and try to, if you're able to make a connection with the indigenous people that live there in a respectful way that helps them out and is of service to them and is not upsetting to them and, you know, give up most respect to all the indigenous people where you live. That's just such a thing I see happening again and again in the new age religious tradition is people just not giving the respect that's due to the ancestors, not giving respect that's due to the teachers that have come before us and not giving respect that's due to the indigenous people and the people related to the ancestors of these indigenous people. The reason why indigenous people are so important to pay attention to and focus on is because they're more connected to the land where we live and their ancestors lived here for so long. The earth is them, like the trees are them. Their bones were here for thousands and thousands of years. Their energy has been here. They played here. They sang. They worked. They cried. They lived. They died. They suffered. And I really believe if you want to have peace where you live, if you want to be at peace, you must be at peace with those ancestors. Now, I think some people, you know, maybe operate on a more physical plane. They're not as sensitive to this type of energy. They're not as sensitive to this type of stuff. And they're just not really interested in spiritual growth and development. It's not really something that they focus on. Or maybe they focus on it in a different way. But I really believe if you're into expanding your consciousness and opening your consciousness up and getting a deeper kind of like connection and metaphysical understanding of what's going on in this world and in your dreams and in, you know, other people's dreams and in the future and the past. And, you know, you're on kind of like a mystical path. You should be making peace with those ancestors that live there and the people that are related to them in real life. 
you can't you can't separate the living relatives of the distant ancestors from them they are one and the same so you know for so long i had a relationship to these sacred sites here to these cave paintings that didn't have a relationship to the people here and now that i have a relationship to some of the chumash my relationship to the cave paintings has diminished i'm not as into it as i was i'm more into connecting with the people today and it's actually allowed me to get a deeper understanding of things but that's why to finish up why it's important to not do psychedelics all the time because when you're doing psychedelics all the time like you don't know where your visions are really coming from they could be coming from the drugs they could be coming from the real ancestors or some spirits you don't know because you take the drugs and it causes the hallucinations so not to say there's anything wrong with taking hallucinogenics for like spiritual or personal development or growth but i'm just saying so often i've known people that have taken psychedelic drugs and gotten so far out there that it's really hard for them to deal with reality it's really hard for them to function in society they end up going crazy or they end up just losing it you know they don't really gain a clear understanding of things and a better focus they get they don't end up helping their family they don't end up helping their community they don't end up saving money or being in good physical shape or uh gaining real wisdom i mean they end up just kind of floundering around not accomplishing a much and yeah they've had some realizations which is great but realizations without the work is just it's like having you know logs and no fire they're not very useful it's not going to do much for you to keep you warm if you don't have fire to light the logs with logs by themselves they're not going to keep you warm and it's the same thing wisdom of realization deep realization like some sort of epiphany or you know moment someone has where they see everything's the same it's like a log that doesn't have any fire it's not going to actually do anything for you you have something there you have the potential to light a fire you have the potential to create something that could be useful but if you don't have the fire which is the work you you're not gonna it's not gonna make anything you know there's very few like well-known holy people or people with a deep realization that didn't do a lot of work even the people you see nowadays that are sad guru and famous you know they do a lot of work they're flying around the country all the time going here touring here touring there doing all these things you know i mean i guess osho kind of sat back but he also gave lots and lots and lots of talks and he translated a lot of uh old sacred texts and stuff so even osho did a lot of work i mean go on youtube there's a plethora of talks that he's given he gave a shit ton of talks he just sat there and said, oh, I know everything. I don't have to do anything to convince anybody of it. You know, he wouldn't be famous to this day. But because he said through his words, he would somehow show people or suck people in or whatever he did. Yeah, he talked a bunch and people listened. Because he had an interesting perspective on things. He had interesting things to say. So, what everybody had heard before a million times just recycled over and over again so that's why i'm just gonna start making these videos because it's just like god there's just so just not enough out there and there's kids out there there's people out there looking struggling trying to find something and i didn't find anything i mean i found what i found but i didn't find anything you know out there in one particular tradition in the year 2018 that they can say, oh man, that's it. They've got it figured out. Maybe they've got it figured out for them, but not for me. So that's just that. Um, 
yeah, so I love you all, and I hope you all have a great day, and if you're not having a great day, I'm sorry that's shitty. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to get off my phone and get to get to work. I got a bunch of stuff to do. I got to clean this house. I got, you could tell, I'm sure you could tell it's a mess. Okay, I'll see you guys. Take care.